Alright guys, so this is uh, not original, FSO, Death Run, and uh, Trice, so today we'll be talking about uh, the tournament podcast. It's going to... Uh, first of all, how is uh, your experience for the tournament this week? Well, no more green, which means white is everywhere again. Basically, that was the main thing, this tournament. What about yeah, this I think week? Uh, for me, I mean, the previous week, I didn't end up seeing much green as it was. I sort of, I saw a lot of ghost decks and white, whereas this week I'm seeing um, still a lot of white, a little bit less ghost decks, because I think more people are running the various counters to it, like Scream of Ghost and uh, things like that. But I'm seeing more Summon Evil this week. I think the problem with ghost decks and the aggro decks, the reason they disappeared is people are starting to get the plus 2 HP and it makes a big difference it seems on their heroes right they have a big two uh, for, for of course for Arkhan as well I mean if you go for uh, burn decks there's a lot less it does seem to be happening sometimes but uh, we don't see as much because the 2 HP can make a big difference just for an example if you go about uh, 2 HP out of 19 it's, it's about 10% more HP anyway and uh, what about you FSO? How was your uh, yeah. experience? I'm seeing a lot of ghosts as well. Also the usual amount of whites. Yeah. Yeah, we've been seeing like, uh, those generic decks, we could say. like Most people try to copy uh, the like working decks, making it easier, as uh, we can see. Um, yeah, it seems so. Well, I actually like that, that there is a develop meta game. It makes playing control actually possible, right. since if everyone played every single random deck, control decks would not be viable for a lot, in a lot of cases because the whole point of control deck is to deal with specific cards that you think people are going to be playing mm -hmm. or specific strategies. Well, I think for me personally, um, a good control deck will be able to control against varied opponents, not sort of the same opponents again and again. Um, I had a few experiences this week where I've played um, some wooden swords and kind of low the, the, the one sword and the double cross swords um, and non-Korean, non-Japanese like because obviously otherwise it would just be the same all over again but they've been running kind of um, like decks I've not seen before I, I saw one person doing um, a modified take on the Black Rush where he'd play the Lesser Demon first turn then uh, second turn was the new Black Elf which deactivates whatever defender they play right. and then on the third oh, and then on the third yeah and then the third turn um knights of Cassadin, and obviously reducing the skill of the elf which has skill ward and therefore doesn't get reduced oh that's um, cool so i thought that was quite nice i also played um a guy who was running a very very basic version of uh, green shifter with lots of gnomes and um the basic card X Ekdesis or something like that, and it was quite effective for somebody of low rank. Yes, yeah, a shift to draw think, card, right? Yeah, um, and I think seeing that sort of deck and be, being able to control those as well would be the hallmark of a good control deck, not just having to deal with the blacks and the whites and the red controls and stuff. Well, every con like you can control uh, deal with generic strategies, but you can't have a control deck that can at the same time, for example beat green rush mm -hmm. white control blue burn red ru i mean green swarm red rush and then like other black control decks that's just not gonna happen yeah there's no actual deck True. that actually Every, can yeah. beat any Everything. kind of deck so far so you need yeah, everything to, has one weakness yeah yeah so you need to but the advantage of black control is that you can choose which matchups you want to be good and which ones you want to be bad so and that's where the metagame comes in is you go, okay, I'm mostly playing against these decks, so I'm going to make these matchups bad, and I don't see these decks, so I'm going to give up on those matchups or make them worse. And without that, I don't think, con like, ex outside of, like, extremely overpowered control decks, I don't think they would be really playable. Right. Um, I've been seeing some actual, uh, how's it called, uh, this actual Lord of the Dead decks and it, it works pretty well actually. If you have like four of them and you can actually manage to uh, put some defense up, 
you can actually attack each turn with a new creature, level 2, mostly ghouls, and sometimes, uh, how is it called, uh, uncommon and cost 1 that can transform Rat and Hound. No. Have you seen this deck, and it, it seems to work really nicely. And uh, I see, well, I did saw some uh, some decks like uh, Sake that actually used a lot of splashing cards, trying to get the best of each union. Really aggressive, but since there's all advantage and uh, negatives about each union, I mean, you, you can manage something uh, pretty nice. Yeah, I think um, for me, I, I haven't seen this sort of specifically zombie uh, Lord of the Dead deck. The only time I've really been seeing it is when people have been using it alongside a Party of the Dead. Right. But I, th I think, um, I mean, there's rumors on our forums at the moment that they're getting ready for the new 3 1 set, and obviously, if that's got some new sorts of zombies, then we may see even more of the deck. Basically, Lord of the Dead. Uh, seems close enough to being playable as it is. All he really needs is like maybe two good zombies right. or like one good zombie and one zombie you wouldn't mind playing in your deck. Mm -hmm. And he and he can go into a kind of like aggroish deck that uses him to make sure guys are big enough to fight yeah, late definitely. game. Because I think one problem with a with a purely zombie deck at the moment is the only of high cost zombies is the uh, gravekeeper of corruption which is terrible <laughs> agreed and uh, and uh, i suppose haynes lich which is expensive for what it is and obviously the dread lich which is good but a 2 2 so not really very yeah beefy in that sense But yeah, if maybe in the next set or something a massive zombie comes out that's like a 4-4 four, four or a 3 I don't think four. you need a massive zombie. I think it, uh, Lord of the Dead would be played with maybe an item that makes zombies. We already have one that is pretty good at making zombies, making ghouls. The ex exile 5 cards from your graveyard make a zombie or whatever The talking. Obelisk of the Dead, yeah. Yeah, Obelisk of the Dead. Yeah. That seems like if that's how I would try to build him, where it's like you play small creatures and then pump them up by one so that they can suddenly trade with big creatures. Because playing a big guy and pumping him his AP by one is not as impactful as making your two drops kill their like four or five drops. Right. I think, the other, yeah, true. Um, thinking about that, one other thing that would probably benefit this deck is if a um, if a low-level zombie came out that had uh, 2 SP, or 2 HP even. Yeah. Because at the moment, all the little ones are 1. Cast 2? Yeah, like a 1-2, or even just a 2-mana a 2-2 two two with some minor drawback. Because obviously, if there was a drawback on summoning it, it wouldn't happen when it was Lord of the Dead summoned, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've been seeing a, a lot of ghost decks these days on tournaments. Uh, I guess it's winning like maybe uh, one game, two games out of three. I don't know the rates about it, but it seems to work real well. Even with the actual plus two HP from heroes that you can upgrade now. So what's the thought about you guys? How do you actually deal with it? For me? Okay. Well, running black control, all they really need is a Curse of Obelisk, and that deals with their entire deck all at once. I haven't had a problem with... I play black control, I don't run anything to deal with the zombie decks, but I found that if they don't have a perfect start, and my hero bar is not leveled, so I don't even have the bonus HP, but often enough, my game will look something like, you know, turn two, uh, turn one, play a trap, turn two, mana, destroy a ghost, turn three, for example, ma uh, mana, destroy a ghost, play one drop. And yeah, that but how do you feel about the more modern version where they will play summon evil on turn three? Yeah, the summon, that's what, basically, that's what I'm saying. If I get a hiding fire in quickly, like turns 1 or turn 3, before he gets a chance to summon evil, I have a good chance of winning, even on the draw. If I don't draw my summon, 
hiding fire because then I have and they summon 